so now we will move on to what to eat. How can we create a diet that provides maximum protection against chronic disease? So we'll look at the 10 steps to an optimal plant-based diet. And step one is to make whole plant foods the foundation of the diet. What I would suggest is 10 or more servings of vegetables and fruits each day with every color of the rainbow. Uh, two or more servings of legumes every day. Uh, intact whole grains being the predominant whole grains you're eating and you vary your, your intake to meet energy needs. Uh, nuts and seeds, one or two servings a day, and generous amounts of herbs and spices. I think this needs to be a new food group because we're finding that there's so there's, there are so many protective phytochemicals and antioxidants in these foods. Step two is to select our carbohydrates with care. And, you know, carbohydrates are not the enemy. Carbohydrates are consistently protective to human health when they come from whole plant foods. If you think about, you remember the list of protective foods and pathogenic, or protective factors and pathogenic factors, and, and we, you know, it was all plant foods are the most protective. Uh, just take a look at the carbohydrate content of plant foods. 92% of the calories from fruits are carbohydrates. 90% in, in starchy vegetables. 75% in grains. 70% in legumes. And 58% in what we call non-starchy vegetables. 58% of the calories are still coming from carbohydrates. If you look, these are the healthiest foods on the planet. They, they provide between 60 and 90% of calories from carbohydrates. How can carbohydrates be dangerous when you consider this simple fact? It wouldn't make sense. But the truth is refined carbohydrates are bad news. And what the carbohydrate naysayers forget <laughs> is that there's a big difference between carbohydrates that are packaged with fiber and phytochemicals and carbohydrates have been, that have been stripped of everything of value to human health. So what are refined carbohydrates? Well, as I mentioned, they're, they're carbohydrates that you take away the fiber, you take away the vitamins and minerals, and, and you know, we do this with, by food processing. And so we've got these simple sugars, uh, sugars and jams and syrups and sweet beverages, and we've got complex refined carbohydrates like white flour products and white rice and so forth. So two categories of refined carbohydrates. And if you think about sugars, well, what is recommended? Well, the American Heart Association says men should not consume more than nine teaspoons a day, women not more than six. The dietary guidelines for Americans say not more than 10% of calories. That's about 12 teaspoons in a 2,000 calorie diet. And the World Health Organization also says not more than 10 calories. However, they also add that less than 5% of calories would actually be better, which is about six teaspoons a day would provide additional health benefits if people could limit sugar intake to, the, to that. In my view, added sugars, how much should we be eating? Zero. <laughs> we don't need them. We get plenty of sweet from fruits and dried fruits and just eating whole foods. We don't need to be adding sugar. But what a lot of people don't know is actual intakes are about 22 teaspoons a day. And if you look at the numbers, just a 20 ounce bottle of soda would be 18 to 21 teaspoons. Uh, flavored coffee, you could get seven to 18 teaspoons of sugar in one coffee. Uh, one cup of fruit yogurt, nine to 12 teaspoons of sugar. A cinnamon bun, 12, an energy bar, five. Even a quarter cup of barbecue sauce, four. Instant oatmeal, all three and a half. It just adds up very quickly when you look at the numbers. And if you look at the sources of added sugars as a percent of calories in the diet, almost half come from sweet beverages. If people did nothing else but stopped drinking sugar, they would make a huge dent in their health improved, uh, you know, they, they, they would have less overweight and obesity and they would reduce inflammation and oxidative stress and so on. So that really is step number one. We get about 31% from, from sweets and snacks. So again, we really need to look at uh, what we're consuming. 
And then if we look at, at the complex carbohydrates that are refined, many people are claiming that grains are harmful to health. We see grain brain, wheat belly, and all of the, the paleo folks saying, do not eat grains, but are grains really helpful? Well, the answer is, you know, I'm going to sound like a bit of a broken record, but only if they are refined. Uh, and, and that's really the bottom line. The problem is 90% plus of the, car, of the grains Americans consume are refined. And so when, you know, when people are saying carb, carbs are bad, they're talking about refined carbs that make up 90% of the grains people are eating. Uh, on the other hand, and when you think about it, when we refine grains, we take a whole grain that has three parts. You probably know this, but the bran, the endosperm, the germ, and we remove two of the three parts. We remove the bran and the germ, where the fiber and the nutrients are, are, are concentrated, and we're left with the endosperm, which is really the carbohydrates, a little bit of protein, a few nutrients, but not, not a whole lot. In the process of turning a whole grain into, say, white flour, we remove 80 to 90% of the fiber, 70 to 80 percent of the vitamins and minerals and about 95 percent of the protective phytochemicals and then who eats a bowl of white flour nobody nobody eats a bowl of white flour what do you do before you eat the bowl of white flour you know you add fat sugar salt color preservatives flavors and then you eat the white flour right and that's the problem. Not only are you removing most of what's of value to human health, you're adding a bunch of junk to it before you actually eat it. That's harmful to human health. So therein lies the problem. The evidence, we've got a 2016 meta-analysis of 45 studies that reported that whole grain intake is associated with a reduced risk of mortality from all causes, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and respiratory diseases. So this is what we know. All whole grains, however, are not created equal. So a granola bar does not equal a bowl of oatmeal. And a box of Kamut flakes, even if they're organic, does not equal a Kamut berry salad. Okay, and so we need to understand there are differences even within the world of whole grains. There's differences because of the level of processing of those whole grains. And so I've created this thing called the whole grain hierarchy. And the whole grain hierarchy is the top of the hierarchy are intact whole grains. And when I say intact whole grains, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the grains as they're picked off the plant. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Oat groats, kamut berries, quinoa, barley. That's what we're talking about. And, and the, even better than cooking those intact whole grains would be sprouting them. Because when you sprout them, you decrease anti-nutrients and you increase a wide variety of nutrients and you increase phytochemical, uh, phytochemicals in that food by probably about 500%. So some, some interesting changes. The next on the list would be cut whole grains. So all we do is chop the whole grains. We're increasing the surface area, we're increasing exposure to oxygen so we could get some oxidation happening. So one level down. And we're talking about things like steel cut oats. Then the rolled whole grains, then the shredded whole grains, then ground whole grains or whole wheat flour products, then flaked whole grains, and then at the bottom of the barrel is puffed whole grains. So why are we going down on this list? Because as we go down, we, we actually increase glycemic index, so the rate at which these foods are absorbed into the bloodstream and impact our blood sugar and, and uh, insulin resistance and so forth, but we're also increasing nutrition, de destruction of nutrients as we go down. So we get fewer nutrients, we get higher glycemic index. And so not that you can't have some of these things down uh, lower on the list, especially people who use a lot of calories. But for people who have disease and are trying to reverse disease, I urge them to draw the line at the rolled whole grains and eat only the grains above the line. And if they want really rapid results, just draw the line at intact whole grains and eat nothing else. So that's just a, you know, one of the ways that I've found in my work, especially with diabetes and in the Marshall Islands, that we see uh, much more dramatic results more quickly. 
is, is sticking more to intact whole grains. So carbohydrate common sense, we want to get our carbohydrates from vegetables, fruits, legumes, and whole grains. We want to avoid all beverages with added sugars, and we want to minimize refined carbohydrates, sugars and starches, and other highly processed grains. Uh, step three is to boost fiber. And, and we know fiber is nature's broom. It keeps our intestinal tract clean. It promotes regularity, improves gut flora. It, it increases satiety and reduces cravings, reduces cholesterol, stabilizes blood sugar, reduces our risk of GI disorders, colorectal cancer, and it enhances immune function. And it also can help to lessen hormonal imbalances. So if we think about how much should we consume, how much people are actually consuming, well, the RDA is 38 grams a day for men and 25 for women, and it's based on about 14 grams per thousand calories of, of uh, food intake. Actual intake is about 15 to 17 uh, grams a day in the American diet. The vegan diet, about 35 to 40 grams a day for women and about 45 to 60 for men. And the, it's not too much different on a raw food diet. Uh, now, this is the shocker, and I'm going to be doing a presentation, I think it's on Monday, on paleolithic diets, you know, the new paleo diet versus real paleolithic diets. And fiber intakes in the paleolithic times were estimated to be between 70 and 150 plus grams a day. Just so you know, it's, it's, this, is, this is what humans consumed for millennia, was far more fiber than even vegans consume. So that one's hard to wrap your brain around, but we'll be talking about that in, the next lecture, in my next lecture. So we want to be aiming for at least 12 to 20 grams of fiber per meal, but we don't want to just be sprinkling wheat bran on food. We want to be getting fiber from a variety of whole plant foods. And if you look at what are the most concentrated sources of fiber, well, beans are at the top of the list, then avocado, then grains, uh, berries, and then other fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. The, the thing to know is only plant foods contain fiber. All whole plant foods contain fiber. Uh, and refined carbohydrates, fast foods, processed foods are low fiber foods. And the no fiber foods, of course, are meat, poultry, fish, dairy, eggs, uh, oils, and sugars. Zero fiber.